Hi, Sarah Mack here. And today I want to dive into the topic of social media strategy and particularly my approach to social media strategy, which is an intuitive one, particularly targeted at creative entrepreneurs. And I have a lot of things to say about social media. There is a lot to say about social media. And this is for you if you have a complex relationship with social media. So the intention is to support you to get some clarity on being in a more empowered relationship with social media so that you're using it as a tool to your advantage versus being a slave to it or it being something that you're perpetually in resistance to. Um, And really finding the right, right relationship for you to be able to use these tools to benefit you and benefit your work and increase the impact that you desire to make through showing up and being more visible with the work that you do. So, you know, there's definitely always room for improvement in my relationship with social media, but overall, I'm proud to say that I have a really healthy relationship. And that I know comes from being very, very focused and intentional. And social media is something that I have always enjoyed. When I first got on Facebook, I loved to post and share. I'm naturally a sharer and I really enjoy sharing with people in real life and in the online world. And I was basically doing my business before I even had a business. I started a project with my best friend when I was doing my master's in Montreal called Project Girl, where I would share content around women's empowerment, women artists, women's stories, um, relationships, sexuality, a lot of the topics that I still talk about today. And I was doing it purely for fun, purely on an impulse and inspiration that I felt called to be sharing. And then I just transitioned that over to my business. You know, once I started learning, I began my entrepreneurial journey and learned about digital marketing. It was essentially the same activity and the same behavior, but with a very different and clear intention that, you know, now makes me a lot of money. So I've always seen and appreciated the potential of social media as a tool to instantly reach people with a message, to handpick and, you know, tailor and target your audience around specific conversations that you value and want to prioritize and the ability to reach people instantly with an idea and and make an impact with the stories and the work and the ideas that you share. And I love social media for that reason. Also, I'm a very impatient person, so it definitely fits with my personality in those ways. Um, But let's talk about and name the realities of social media and the way that it is designed to literally invade your um, mind space, your focus, your time, your money, and it really is set up to profit from the time that you invest on these programs. And so navigating that is a constant act of resistance and, you know, very focused and intentional choice making. And it's very easy to go into overwhelm. And I've definitely been in those places where I haven't been feeling good and have used social media to avoid what it is that I'm feeling and to distract myself and to seek emotional fulfillment um, through the scroll. And that's something that requires real intentionality around so that it doesn't become a threat to our mental health, which is a very real thing that many, 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 many people experience. So let's just name that and acknowledge that and realize that that is the thing that we are dealing with and that it's not an easy thing to navigate. So no shame if you are feeling in conflict in your relationship with social media. What I find really, really important is having clear boundaries and, you know, really being diligent in honoring them. And my story is that I was on Instagram for my personal and then for my personal life. And then when I started my business as a copywriter, initially, I decided to create a whole new 
um, profile. And then I switched all of my social media use to be intentionally for business. Like I no longer, you know, yes, I do still occasionally connect with personal connections, but that is not my intention for being there. I use it very intentionally and very strategically for my business. And I try to keep off it as much as possible other than that. And then obviously my business and my personal life has merged a lot since I launched my coaching business because I am a personal brand and my life and my life story is a big part of the message that I am taking a stand for in the work that I do with my clients. So the lines have definitely become more more blurred there. And, um, but it, the main thing that really helped for me was when I switched in my mind to, um, from being a consumer to becoming a creator. And now I no longer consider myself, I no longer identify myself as a consumer of social media. Obviously I do still consume other people's social media when I'm on the app, but that's never my intention. When I go in, my intention is always to create, to put out and to engage. And I'm like very, very clear that I don't want to be consuming on social media. On, on Facebook, I installed, there's the newsfeed eradicator. There's also a feminist newsfeed eradicator. So it literally cuts out the scroll on my desktop. So there is no scrolling. I don't, I, as much as possible, only go in when I'm looking to create and produce and put out. And I really avoid um, and try to limit as much as possible going in there for any other reason. Obviously, I still do, but I'm still pretty good at keeping it short and sweet. Like I'll go in, check my notifications, and then I'll come out. Like I, I really just don't engage in scrolling as much as possible. Obviously, occasionally it still happens, but I'm very clear, having being very clear around that intention and just watching myself so that if I do end up in a scroll, sometimes I'll let myself because I genuinely want to, but that doesn't happen very often because I am overall very intentional with my time. I also only follow people who are related to the conversations that I want to be having in connection to my work. I don't follow friends and family. I don't, um, I don't have like a ton of old connections from the past there. I don't get people's news from social media. So I'm very clear with that boundary. And I only follow people who, whose content is uplifting me and is adding value to me in some way. And I think it's so, so, so important to release comparison. And I think it's really important to have a clear mindset focus of when I come across somebody who's doing something similar to me, I'm going to look at it from a place of receiving inspiration versus a place of comparison and are they doing better than me and am I good enough and what could I be doing differently? And I think it's some of those questions can be healthy to ask if you're, you know, genuinely looking for inspiration to inspire the way that you're doing things. But overall, I don't think they're very useful at all. And this is what I mean by intuitive social media strategy is really letting everything come from inside, letting your impulses, your ideas, your inspirations, your calling to show up where and say what, letting that all come from inside versus coming from, oh, I've seen other people doing this. Sometimes I will get curious and be like, okay, what's this new feature? How are people using it to learn more? But regardless, I think it's always a better strategy to learn from someone who knows what they're talking about from a behind the scenes perspective versus just seeing what people are doing from a, you know, um, from an audience perspective and then trying to guess what their strategy is. So um, I think mindset is really the most crucial piece well, in anything in life, but especially when it comes to our relationship with social media. So really getting clear and negotiating on what those boundaries look like for you. And there was one thing that I did at at a point in time where I had a a two week social media cleanse and I did it during a summer one year and it turned turned into a two month thing. I like just didn't feel like I had the need to put those apps back on my phone again. And I really enjoyed that. And I actually think that was the, the gap in time that led to me choosing to intentionally create a new account with the clear intention of creating for my business. So now 
I, it brings me so much value to be engaging in social media. Like literally all of my income, all of my clients come through social media and a lot of my friends come through the internet that I have met on social media. And so many incredibly amazing things have come into my life as a result of the way that I engage in social media. So there's just no desire for me right now to take a break from social media. And I definitely, you know, do my best to keep off it on the weekends and do my best to only go in when I'm creating and putting out and not spending that much time there during the week. So it feels very balanced to me. And that's something that I've been able to maintain consistently for several years in a row and only had a really, really positive experience using these tools. So um, I'm going to talk about a few more questions that come up that I hear people talking about, for example, being vulnerable and knowing how much to share and how much of our personal life to show and what's too much or what's not enough or what's hiding. Um, And to just reiterate that there's no wrong or right answer and whatever feels right to us as an individual is the right thing to do. And so for me, I've definitely cultivated this, you know, a daily practice of sharing since the beginning of my business during the week, Monday to Friday and or most days. And it really, I built this into my morning mindset practice. So in the morning I wake up, I meditate, I work out, I journal. And then usually from that journaling, some insp- I'll tap into the inspiration, particularly when I do movement. When I do movement, I tap into a lot of inspiration. And then when I couple that with journaling, a lot of inspiration is flowing through me. And that is just where I built the habit of creating content from. So it's been actually a very nourishing and inspirational practice for me from the get-go. And that really honed my ability to listen to my inspiration and to be able to translate that into a message. So it happens so quickly. Like I can put a post out in 10 minutes sometimes. And, um, and you know, obviously because I've practiced this for years and years at this point, it just is so natural to me. It's so easy. It's very enjoyable and it really doesn't take that much time at all. So it's really just become a very intuitive and natural part of the way that I go about my day. And that ability to identify when something, a message or a piece of content, once, you know, the idea is being birthed through me, now I know how to identify that and trust that when I share that, it usually really resonates with people and, and, you know, attracts the right people to my work. And so I really trust that process for myself. And And I'm always doing work on tweaking my content and my focus and my intentionality and the energy that I'm bringing and how I'm I'm embodying what it is that I'm talking about and how I'm showing that and communicating that. And that's a conversation that I'm always in and always looking to up level in and create even more ease around. And so I'm, I'm, I'm taking in advice from people who are succeeding in the way that I desire to succeed. And I try on their strategies for myself, integrate them and make them work for myself versus, you know, looking at what other people are doing and then, and then doing that for myself. So that's what I mean by intuitive content strategies, really letting it come from within versus letting what other people are doing being the thing that influences my decision making. And there's a difference between, you know, and I know when I'm feeling the very strong call to share something and I know what that feeling is and I've identified that. So I know when I'm feeling called to share something, I know that it's important that I share that. I know that it's going to bring value to my audience and it feels really good to share that, even if it feels scary even if it feels risky because it's so personal or because there's so much emotional charge around what it is that I'm sharing, I've really, through that practice of listening to myself and translating that into content, learned to identify when there's a call to share something 
and to follow that and to trust to see how things work so well when I follow that. And, um, and there's no shame in waiting until you feel really ready and really, um, you know, really good about sharing what you're going to share. And I think there's, you know, there's a fine line between that and because I think when you hold back on something that you're feeling really called to share, then um, the resistance feels worse and it feels so much better to just do it. And the, un- the discomfort of doing it is actually better than the discomfort of not doing it. So you're the only person that can feel into you and really assess where you are on that scale. The other piece that I think is really important to talk about is perfectionism. So perfectionism is so pervasive in our culture, particularly as women and on social media. And, you know, there's definitely a move away from depicting ourselves as perfect, even though it's still it's still a huge issue. Right. Particularly visually um, and how that's impacting people psychologically. So I think it's our responsibility to share the lows and the hard things and the challenges and to, um, and to just be honest about both sides of the story, to really lean into celebrating our results and our wins and our successes, and equally to name the things that have been challenges for us and to talk about how they have impacted us and to share how we have got through it and how we thrived and survived and created successes in spite of the challenges. And this is a really big piece in sales content as well, because obviously people don't buy from you if they don't believe it's not what you've done is possible for them because you're just perfect (laughs) and they're not perfect. So how could they ever trust that it would be just as easy for them as it, you, you know, you claim that it is for you. So I think it's really, really important to share both sides of the story when you can share from an, an empowered place. And, um, and I think that's one of the most revolutionary things that we can do is to share the truth about how not perfect we all are. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. We're all perfectly imperfect. We all go through challenges. We're all human beings. We all have ups and downs. We all get triggered. We all have low moments. And it's just not true that there are people who don't experience that. It's not true. So owning that and recognizing that it's safe to not be perfect. It's safe to half-ass it sometimes and that it's still enough. And the more we step, I have noticed for myself, the more that I've stepped into that and done something when I've either been judging myself really hard or felt like I wasn't good enough in that moment or perfect enough or whatever to go ahead and do it anyway and then be like, oh, I was like 10 million times more capable than I thought I was at, you know, talking about that thing or doing that hard thing. And actually what I really created was super valuable as a result of stepping into that discomfort. So full permission to only do what's fun for you when it comes to creating and sharing. And, you know, fun can be used to apply to things that you're feeling very called and passionate about doing, even if they're highly uncomfortable, even if they're challenging for you to step out and do. And remember that things are only challenging and uncomfortable for the most part at the beginning. And the more you do something, the more easeful and natural it becomes. And so stepping out into being more visible, particularly around the more vulnerable aspects of the work that you do and the story that you are feeling called to share in order to um, reach more people with your work, the more you do it, the better you get at it, the more comfortable it becomes, even though it probably always will be a little bit uncomfortable, but your capacity to be in the discomfort will grow tremendously. So just remember that it gets to be more fun the more you do it. And when you're feeling really called to do something, saying yes and following through on that is the most fun thing you can do for yourself because being in resistance to it, as we all know, is really not fun. So another point that I think is really important is that what is fun and appealing can change a lot 
when you start to shift some of the mindset stuff and resistance to more visibility that happens when you really commit to showing up for your work and something that initially could have felt totally abhorrent to you before can appear uh, can appear like no big deal all of a sudden because you really leaned into that decisiveness and that commitment in recognizing that you're feeling called to show up and share in this way or to be more visible about a certain aspect of who you are or your work. And when you really commit, suddenly it can feel a whole lot easier than when you're giving into the resistance and noticing all of the reasons why it's hard and why you don't want to do it or why it's, you know, social media is bad and toxic and whatever, all of the running narratives that are completely true when we choose to focus on them, that actually we totally have the power to shift that narrative and to be more powerful than the tool. We are more powerful than the tool. So if we are giving our power away to the tool, stop, (laughs) stop, because nobody wins. Nobody wins when that, when that is happening. So, you know, and regardless, honor your process, honor where you're at and know that, that there are 50 million different ways for you to make an impact and reach people with your work. So give yourself permission to get creative, give yourself permission to follow the path of least resistance online, as well as offline put some flyers up, hold an in-person workshop, pick a new social media uh, platform that nobody you know is on yet and go and make as much noise over there as you want. Wherever it is that feels safest for you to play with sharing the message that you're feeling called to share, to promote the work that you are feeling called to do more of and to reach more people with, permission to do it in whichever way feels the safest for you. And then knowing, just being in that process and saying yes to that and committing to that, that you will build that strength and conviction and capacity to be doing this work that will make it so much easier for you to overcome what would have been um, perceived as big roadblocks beforehand. So, you know, obviously when social media becomes the most desired option for you, then pick the places that you genuinely enjoy spending time in because forcing yourself to be somewhere you don't want to be just isn't ever going to work well, right? Particularly as we know, because consistency is key. And, um, you know, you can also really recreate your environment on the social platforms by starting a new account and being super strategic about the audience that you're building around that that new account. You can also create and give all of your content to an assistant to post and share for you so you don't have any reason to be on the platforms unless you have decided that you want to be. And this is actually something that is way more affordable than you think. You could literally start paying someone 20 bucks an hour, one hour a week to post and schedule out all of your content for you. And then you could just sit down and create it if you want to. So this is just a reminder that there's so many solutions for you to be able to navigate your relationship with a tool that has the potential to completely change your life and completely shift the trajectory of your, you know, of the work that you're doing. So you know, obviously some level of engagement will be required of you at some point, but you can keep very tight boundaries and parameters around that. I, you know, when usually I work from home and I'm home alone. And so I do just spend more time on social media when I'm, when I'm in that situation, but when I'm traveling or I'm visiting friends or staying with family, you know, my bare minimum requirements for the social that maintains my income and maintains my business can require as little as an hour or two a week in like 10 and 20 minute bursts. And then I don't need to be on the platform at all for the rest of the day. And so I just get to ask myself and you get to ask yourself, like, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth having, you know, doing the work to maintain the boundaries that allow me to have a healthy relationship with social media for all of the things that I gain as a result of that. To me, 100%, it's worth it. Um, 
And so I think this all really all boils down to really reevaluating the stories you are telling yourself about your relationship with social media. And, you know, I still do this. Getting off my phone at night is something that I find quite difficult because I love to listen to the late night shows on YouTube when I'm falling asleep. Um, I do have another couple of strategies that work for me that I do engage in sometimes, but I really enjoy that. Um, even though I know it does reduce the quality of my sleep when I do that. So I'm definitely in a story that it's, that I don't want to do that, right? Like that's the story that I'm in is that I don't want to give that up. But if I was to shift that story and I, you know, when I did, I went through a period where I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to shift this. I'm going to do something even better, which, you know, I would play some meditation music, not look at my phone and read a book. And that worked really well for me for a while and was great and actually better. So whatever story we're really deeply rooted in about why it's hard or why we don't want to do something, there's always the power to shift that and change that. And when it will truly benefit us when we do, it's really worth doing that work. And I really believe it's worth doing that work in our relationships with social media because of the power that it gives us to impact people's lives instantly and immediately and to create massive opportunity and abundance in our own lives. So what do you wish to be true? And I love to remind my clients of that's the internet and social media is a giant fishbowl. Everyone has a three second memory, even if they see something and they judge you for it, or you post something and then regret it later. Don't worry, everyone else has forgotten about it. No one else gives a flying fuck about what you're doing, except for the people who genuinely are impacted in a positive way and, and are moved by what it is that you're doing. And for those people, it was worth it that you did it. So I also like to set energetic boundaries and just decide that only ideal clients see my content. And I know tons of other people in my life are watching my content as well, but I'm not focused on them. I'm not focused on them. And if there was, you know, and I blocked people who, who it was difficult for me not to focus on, who I didn't have a good relationship with, I just blocked them. Like, sorry, not sorry. This is for my business. This is my mission. And this helps me to do my work in a better way. I'm sure they're fine. <laughs> I'm sure they're fine living their life, not looking at my social media. Um, so, you know, being very intentional around where and why you're showing up and where and what the impact is and the intention is and the vision is for your investment of your time and energy in that place. When I show up, I make a positive impact and it's also enjoyable for me too. I love creating on social media. But that's a choice. It's a choice to love it. It's a choice to find a way that I love doing it. And, you know, I give myself flexibility. If I don't feel like making a video, then I'll do a post. If I don't feel like showing my face, then I'll show something else, right? Like we have so many, a whole palette of things to choose from in the ways that we can show up these days that there really is no excuse for not finding a creative way to leverage these platforms for the benefit of, of the work that we're doing. So really creating these new stories and taking a stand for showing up from that energy and conviction around what you're no longer available for. Also, there's a ton of tools to help with the, you know, the control and the addictive quality. Um, there's like social media control apps that you can put on your iPhone that will limit, you know, do some pop-ups when you've used like over your daily allotted time. Um, and I found that with boundaries, it does really help to monitor and create accountability and track over an extended period to create a new behavior pattern and habit. So I went through a stage where I experimented, where I didn't go on any social apps before, I think it was like before midday. And then I even did some days where it was before five, I like refused to go on any apps. And I did notice on those days, my creativity and my productivity skyrocketed. So I'm very intentional around just like, it's like breaking the seal in the day, right? I'll, my th even when my thumb is creeping towards the app, which I make the apps in it like quite difficult to access it, to access. Like I have to swipe and like go into a bunch of folders. So I have those, you know, a number of actions through which to become conscious enough to be like, oh, do I really want to be going in here right now? No. And I can 
save my social media seal until as late in the day as possible, usually until I'm ready to to create something because the inspiration has moved me to put something out. That works pretty well for me. Um, But yeah, tracking like the hours and gamifying it. So you reward yourself when you don't do it. There's so many different ways that we can alter our habits and behavior. And the longer that you do it, then the easier it is to maintain that. So ultimately, as with everything, stay focused on the vision. It's totally worth it. So let the vision of what's possible when you use these tools in an intentional way drive you more than the pain of what isn't working. Above all, listen to yourself while also leaning into the challenges, questioning your triggers and limiting beliefs and stories and resistance, and really noticing, most importantly, when ideas are coming up for you again and again, in terms of strategies, in terms of platforms, in terms of creative choices, and just start to follow through on them and really give them a shot and work it until it works. And then you can decide if it was, you know, if there's something better out there for you or not, versus kind of just being in resistance and allowing disempowering stories to get in the way of you really succeeding at something, like really going all in on it and deciding to make it work for you, and then tweaking it and making it your own or adjusting it or changing it. So... I hope that this has sparked some shifts and some inspiration to elevate your relationship with social media. I would love to hear your thoughts, your comments, your insights, things that have worked well for you, things that you struggle with, because I believe this is a really important conversation. It's so connected to our mental health and it's so connected to the potential that, you know, it holds to be able to connect with millions of people online in conversations that we really value and that are really important to us and the work that we're doing. So please, wherever you're listening to this, you can head over to YouTube to watch the video. You can listen on iTunes, Spotify, head over to my socials on Instagram or Facebook at with Sarah Mac and leave me a comment, send me a message. I would love to know how this conversation is landing for you. And what you took away from this that you're going to start implementing to have a healthier relationship with social media. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a review, a five-star review over on iTunes to help more people learn about this content. And I will see you next week. Bye. For more inspirational content, head over to my website with and please support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing.